uh, good morning students uh, today is uh, lecture 6 of module 2 uh, in today's uh, class we shall start discussing the preparation of various membranes so we'll start from synthetic membranes of course we'll discuss only synthetic membranes as uh, i told you earlier is, is that uh, biological membrane is out of our scope so we'll discuss non porous and porous membrane preparation different methods and uh, today's focus will be mostly on phase inversion membranes as you know uh, there are large number of materials are available for preparing uh, membranes. We have discussed uh, uh, all such uh, membrane materials uh, such as polymers and inorganic uh, materials, they are different properties. There are advantages and disadvantages of using these uh, materials for membrane preparation. Similarly, um, uh, there are so many different varieties or types of uh, uh, pre membrane preparation techniques are available. Uh, which can uh, be used uh, for uh, preparing a particular uh, membrane uh, um, uh, for a specific uh, task. Uh, now, uh, um, based on the st structure and separation principle, we can divide the uh, membranes into three classes. Uh, first is uh, porous membrane, which is of course our microfiltration, ultrafiltration, uh, all these membranes. Then we have non-porous membranes, which are also called dense membranes. So, those are used for gas separation, pervaporation, dialysis and all. And then we have carrier mediator, uh, carrier mediated membranes or carrier membranes, which basically works on facilitated transport. In a nutshell, we have discussed this, but in a uh, in our subsequent lecture, um, we will devote one full class to uh, discuss facilitated transport. So, uh, RO membrane actually it lies in between our porous and uh, non-porous membranes. So, uh, for porous membranes, the dimension of the pore mainly determines the separation. The type of membrane material being crucial uh, uh, importance for chemical, thermal and mechanical stability, but the type of material is not at all uh, contributing to the flux and overall rejection. So, uh, membranes of this class actually induce separation by discriminating between particle size. So, uh, uh, that is why these are called size based separation basically and such membranes are microfiltration and ultrafiltration. So, we can obtain very high selectivities when the solute size or particle size is very very large relative to the pore size. So, all of them will be subsequently written. You can see how a microporous uh, membrane looks like. So, this is a polypropylene membrane, this is same image actually FECM image. Uh, membranes of uh, non-porous uh, uh, nature uh, will separate the molecules approximately the same size from each other. That is the beauty of non-porous or dense membranes. So, actually separation is taking place by virtue of the differences either in uh, diffusivity or solubility. So, uh, that precisely means the polymeric material um, of the membrane is determining the extent of selectivity and permeability. So, uh, these membranes are mostly used in pervaporation application as well as uh, gas separation and dialysis uh, membranes. You can see a, a PACM image of a non-porous or dense uh, membrane here. The next class of membrane is carrier membranes. So, here this is a, a specific uh, class of membranes in which uh, the transport is through facilitated mechanism. So, here the membrane uh, transport under this class is uh, not determined by any way of the membrane. So, the membrane material is not playing any role. So, who is uh, helping in transport is basically the carrier molecule which is present inside the pores of the membrane. So, we can uh, have two different mechanisms here, either we can have a carrier that is fixed to the membrane matrix or we can have a carrier which is mobile when it is dissolved inside the liquid and that liquid is filled in the pores of the membranes. And the membrane itself, uh, the solid membrane itself is providing a mechanical support for uh, such purposes. Uh, the perm selectivity towards a component depends mainly on the specificity of the carrier uh, molecule. So, uh, what is the carrier molecule, what is its nature? That means, the, its physical and chemical nature. So, all these uh, things will determine uh, the overall selectivity. So, through the use of specially tailored carriers, extremely high selectivities can be obtained. The meaning uh, of this uh, sentence is basically for a particular target separation. So, I can choose a carrier molecule in such a way that I can get very high selectivities. See in this uh, particular uh, catch, uh, these are the carriers, okay. how they are helping and they are binding to this uh, solute. This is another solute which I want to transport. So, this is a carrier and uh, solute intermediate complex. Uh, when it is reaching the membrane surface, the permeate side, then it is dissociating itself and the carrier is again back to the back inside the membrane for uh, press binding of the solute. Okay. 
So, uh, the component to be removed can be gaseous, liquid, ionic or non-ionic to some extent uh, the functionality of this kind of membrane approaches that of a cell membrane. So, basically most of the biological uh, membranes uh, they work in such mechanism. So, let us now discuss uh, preparation of the membranes. So, all kinds of different synthetic materials can be used for preparing membranes. Actually, the aim is to modify the membrane by means of an appropriate technique to obtain the membrane structure uh, with a particular morphology which will suit a particular separation. So, the material actually limits the preparation technique involved. So, what is the meaning of this? Meaning is that I cannot use any material for any preparation technique. Let us say there is a particular technique uh, called sintering. I am just giving an example. So, I cannot use any type of material for sintering though most of the polymers and ceramics are used, but there are restrictions. Similarly, for there are restrictions for trackage uh, uh, itching, there are restrictions for interfacial polymerization. Okay. So, uh, number of different techniques are available to prepare synthetic membranes, some of these techniques can be used uh, to prepare polymeric as well as inorganic membranes. So, that means some of the techniques can be used for both polymeric and inorganic materials. However, uh, there are few techniques which are exclusively meant for either polymeric or either ceramic membranes or inor inorganic membranes. So, we will we'll see one by one uh, today um, uh, uh, the different techniques to prepare membrane. Uh, so, uh, some of them are sintering, stretching, track etching, phase inversion, sol gel, vapor deposition and solution coating. So, today we will discuss few of them. So, uh, first we will discuss the symmetric non-porous membranes, okay, then followed by symmetric uh, porous membranes and then we will discuss the asymmetric porous membranes which are basically the composite membranes. Okay. So, let us discuss the symmetric non-porous membranes or dense membranes. So, dense non-porous symmetric membranes are rarely used in membrane separation processes because the flux through these relatively thick, they are very thick membranes okay, is too low for practical separation purposes. In one class, uh, if you remember as uh, I told you earlier that the membrane thickness should be as much uh, as less as possible. Otherwise, the membrane material uh, and its thickness is providing a additional resistance to the separation. So, if it will be uh, very thin, then the resistance will be less. If uh, it is very, very thick, then the resistance will be more. So, ultimately the separation will be low. So, this is very important and uh, that is why uh, these uh, non-porous membranes which are usually thick than other uh, porous membranes, okay, they are not giving high flux and the selectivity is also less. So, however, they are widely used in laboratory work to characterize membrane properties. So, there are two uh, simple way we are discussing, there are many other ways also. The first one is called solution casting and the second one is called melt extrusion. So, you can see actually how uh, thick actually a dense membrane or um, uh, this one non-porous membrane is. So, solution casting is one of the most easiest way, it is very crude way to do actually uh, and we can do it in a lab scale. So, what is being done in this say a uh, film of a appropriate polymers for solution is spread across a flat plate with a casting knife. Please look at the figure now. So, this is actually the casting knife. Okay. So, uh, and this is the film right. So, the casting knife consists of a steel blade resting on two runners. Okay. So, this is one runner, this is another runner. So, basically it moves, it moves, we can move it in this direction, I can again further move it in this direction. So, uh, uh, um, the knife consists of a steel blade resting on two runners arranged to form a precise gap between the blade and the plate onto which the film is cast. And what is the role of knife? So, I can adjust the knife height in such a way to, to obtain a desired thickness of the membrane. And uh, after casting, the solution is left to stand for some time. Okay. Uh, the reason is that let the solvent evaporates. Okay. When the solvent evaporates, then it will uh, a very thin uniform polymer film will be uh, precipitated and it will be uh, collected. Now, once all the solvent evaporated, the film becomes dry, we can take it up. Now, it may happen many times the uh, film um, after the solvent evaporation has become very sticky to the surface of the plate. So, that time we have to use a non swelling, uh, so, sorry, swelling non solvent, usually water or alcohol that will usually lose the film so that I can take the film without distorting its structure further. So, uh, the next one is actually melt extruded film. So, this is exclusively used for certain polymers uh, which do not dissolve in some uh, suitable casting solvents uh, like uh, nylon, 
Okay. Such polymers are compressed between two heated plates. There are two heated plates under which these polymers are uh, actually compressed. And so, typically uh, uh, a pressure, very high pressure is applied, usually 2000 to 5000 uh, psi pressure is applied for very uh, uh, small uh, residence time, usually 1 to 5 sec uh, minute okay. at a plate temperature just above the melting point of the um, polymer. Now, many times what happens if the polymers which I want to uh, use for this non-porous membrane preparation uh, is available in the forms of bits, small bits, then we need to decrease the particle size. So, we can go for uh, some pressing uh, to decrease the particle size or grinding, okay. then we can uh, put it under the blades. So, the optimum pressing temperature is the lowest uh, temperature that yields a membrane of completely fused polymer of the desired thickness. So, basically we want uh, uh, temperature pressure in such a way that the entire polymer material which is supplied uh, between these two plates uh, has been uh, melted and uh, uh, resulted in a desired thickness. So, you can see this is actually a melt extrusion system in which there are two uh, drums, one is here and one is, is are rotating okay, in this direction and uh, the casting solution is poured here. You can see a small knife type of arrangement here, okay, which is just like uh, the blade which we discussed the earlier slide, okay, that determines the thickness of the membrane. Okay. And air is being pushed from the uh, bottom here okay. and uh, the air will actually help in evaporating the solvent. So, the next is symmetric porous membrane. So, we will discuss four different types of uh, preparation uh, uh, techniques here. The first one is sintering, then stretching, then track itching and then template leaching. So, these are uh, the preparation techniques for symmetric porous membranes. So, sintering is a very old age uh, metallurgical process actually it is. So, it is a quite simple technique allowing porous membranes to be obtained from organic as well as inorganic material. So, the beauty of this particular technique is that I can use both polymers as well as uh, inorganic materials. Um, the method involves compressing a powder consisting of particles of a given size and sintering it at elevated temperature. Your yeah, sintering means you are uh, uh, putting them uh, under very high high uh, elevated at, uh, temperature uh, in an atmosphere of a very high elevated temperature and the required temperature depends on the materials to be used. What temperature you are going to uh, uh, set actually that depends upon the material which uh, you are using. Okay, there is no thumb rule for this. So, during the sintering the interfaces between the contacting particles disappear, the interfaces not phases. Okay. So, please see this figure. You can see uh, I have shown you four different uh, grains. Okay, of uh, uh, this is the first. Uh, this is the initial stage. Here the grains are small and the pore. Okay, whatever it is available here, the interspace between these pores, uh, these uh, four uh, grains. Okay, that is actually big. And in the intermediate stage, what is happening? So the grain size increases. So the grains, this these grains, they are fusing together. Right. When they fuse together, the grain size increases. However, the pore size decreases. You can see the pore size has become small. Okay. Then in the final stage, the grain size remains. Uh, we get a big grain. Okay. And we get a small pore, very small pore. This is how actually uh, the pores are developed using a uh, sintering process. So, wide range of different materials can be used such as powders of polymers, okay, uh, metals, ceramics and even glass silicates. So, this is uh, this scheme actually is interesting and will be more clear. So, uh, we will discuss this. See, let us see the pore size of the resulting material actually a membrane is determined by the particle size and particle size distribution of the powder. So, please remember this, this is very important. So, the pore size is determined by the particle size and particle size distribution of the powder. Powder means the material, your material which from which you are um, uh, going to make your membrane. So, the narrower the particle size. About distribution, the narrower the pore size distribution in the resulting membrane. So, uh, if we get a very, very narrow particle size distribution, something like this, okay, then we will also get a very narrow membrane, uh, sorry, pore size distribution. So, this technique allows a pore size of about 0.1 micron to 10 micron okay. and uh, uh, all the materials mentioned here are basic materials for sintering process have the common feature of outstanding chemical, thermal and mechanical stability particularly the inorganic materials. Uh, since uh, we are talking about a very high elevated temperature process, so uh, the uh, materials that uh, supposed to be used for this process um, uh, should have very good uh, thermal and mechanical stability. So, uh, only one problem is this 
we can only make uh, microfiltration membranes out of this. It is very difficult to uh, make ultrafiltration or nanofiltration range. So, it is not possible basically. So, the porosity of the porous polymeric membrane is generally low, normally in the range of 10 to 20 percent or sometimes a little higher also. Uh, now, we have little advanced techniques. So, you can see how uh, nicely this uh, particular scheme um, make you understand of the sintering process. Usually, initially the powder will be loose. <coughs> then they becomes uh, they close they come close uh, uh, together okay and then intermediate stage you can see small small uh, the interfaces are, um, uh, um, uh, is growing okay uh, sorry disappearing and then um, uh, when uh, most of the grains are fused together okay we get the pores of different sizes so, the next one is stretching. So, in this method an extruded film or foil made from a partial crystalline polymeric material usually polytetrafluoroethylene PTFE, uh, polypropylene PP or polyethylene is stretched perpendicular to the direction of the extrusion. So, that the crystalline regions are located parallel to the extrusion direction. Basically, there is a uh, film uh, which is casted okay, and you are supposed to stretch that. So, stretching can be done by various method. Okay. So, in a, you are applying a mechanical stretch basically right uh, what is the intention to create cracks or ruptures okay so uh, when you create a crack on ruptures uh, by giving mechanical stress then later on uh, you have to go for a process in which you are going to wash these membranes so that whatever uh, these loose or adhered particles are attached to the surface of the uh, pores will get basically washed away and the pores becomes clean so, only semi crystalline polymeric materials can be used for this technique. The porosity of these membranes is much much higher than that of the uh, that obtained by sintering and almost we can get up to 90 percent uh, porous. So, so, you can have a longitudinal stretching inside a oven or you can have a traverse set, uh, stretching and setting and this particular uh, same image is for a stretched uh, polytetrafluoroethylene membrane. So, the next uh, method is track etching. These are old techniques, but are also used nowadays for uh, making commercial membranes. So, uh, the simplest pore geometry in a membrane uh, is an assembly of parallel cylindrically shaped pores of uniform dimensions. We get very nice pore structure in this method. Okay. Such structures can be obtained by track etching. In this method, a film which is already casted actually, when I am uh, talking about that a film, okay, that means a polymer which is already dissolved in a solvent okay, and then it is casted in a film. So, now that film is subjected to high energy particle radiation okay, applied perpendicular to the film. So, what this uh, radiation is doing? The radiation is do damaging the polymer matrix basically by creating tracks uh, or cracks whatever you can call them. So, in the earlier slide uh, what uh, uh, we discussed about stretching that the stretching was done by mechanically here actually uh, we are not doing stretching we are creating the same tracks or cracks by uh, radiation. So, the film is then immersed in a acid or alkaline bath and the polymeric material is eased away along these tracks to form a uniform cylindrical pores with narrow pore size distribution. So, you get very nice uniform cylindrical pores with a narrow pore size distribution. So, uh, usually pore sizes uh, of 0.2 micron to 10 micron are obtained, uh, however the surface porosity is low about 10 percent. Uh, the choice of polymeric material um, depends mainly on the thickness of the film and on the energy of the particles that is being applied, okay, how much radiation you are applying actually. So, the maximum penetration thickness of the particles with this energy is about usually 20 micron, right. When the energy of the particles is increased, the film thickness can also be increased and even inorganic materials can be used. Usually polymeric materials are used, however, in recent some advancements uh, have uh, taken place where they have used some inorganic materials also as for example, mica. Okay. So, uh, the porosity is mainly determined by the radiation time, okay. whereas pore diameter is determined by the itching time. Okay. So, um, uh, itching uh, is done to remove whatever the loose or adhered particles uh, uh, that is uh, attached to the crack, okay, then the uh, um, uh, pores will be cleaned. Next method is template leaching. So, uh, this is a uh, another technique for preparing porous membrane by uh, the name is template leaching. So, what is being done here actually? We are leaching out one of the component from a film. Okay. So, in this process a homogeneous melt actually is prepared from the mixture of polymeric membrane matrix material and a leachable component. So, the leachable component is already mixed while we are making a uh, film. right? So, to finally disperse uh, 
the leachable component in the polymeric matrix, the mixture is often homogenized, extruded, pelletized several times before the final extrusion as a thin film. You can see the uh, schematic actually. So, one example is uh, porous glass membranes. So, you can prepare porous glass membranes by this technique. So, you prepare a homogeneous melt at a temperature of usually 1000 to 1500 degrees centigrade ok of three component system. So, um, yeah, this is your sodium oxide, barium trioxide and silicon dioxide ok. This is a three component system. It is cooled and as a consequence the system separates into two phases. So, what are these two phases? So, the one phase containing mainly silicon dioxide ok. So, that phase is not soluble right and other phase is soluble. Now, this second phase is leached out by an acid or base and a wide range of pore diameters can be obtained with a minimum size of about 0 0.005 meter. So, basically what is happening when the leaching is happening? So, this leaching is creating the pores. But anyway, again uh, once this leaching process is uh, um, over, the film will be subjected to uh, certain uh, um, uh, washing techniques or uh, you, you can again put them to some bath in which uh, uh, using some solvent or non-solvent you can uh, wash out the loosely adhered particles which are there inside the pores. Basically, you are cleaning the pores. So, the next one is asymmetric porous membranes. Um, under this, we will discuss various uh, processes uh, such as uh, coating phase inversion separation, interfacial polymerization and solution coated composite membranes. So, today we will restrict our discussion to uh, coating and phase inversion, uh, next methods we will discuss in our next lecture. So, uh, uh, usually we can uh, prepare dense polymeric membranes in which transport uh, takes place by diffusion generally show low fluxes. Okay. To increase the flux through these membranes, the effective membrane thickness must be reduced as much as possible. So, that is what I was telling few minutes before also, right. This may be achieved by preparing composite membranes. So, composite membranes or asymmetric membranes, right. So, such composite membranes consist of two different materials with a very selective membrane material being deposited as a thin layer, okay on a porous layer. So, this is the thin layer, selective layer ok, which is actually doing the separation. Then we can have another uh, uh, sealing layer here ok, having very very low pore size distribution. Then another layer here ok, which is highly microporous. So, that is providing your support. So, the actual selectivity is determined the thin top layer, whereas the porous sub layer is serv serving the support. Support means uh, it is providing mechanical support. So, several coating procedures can be used such as deep coating, plasma uh, polymerization, interfacial polymerization and in situ polymerization to achieve these membranes. Another type of coating is also possible where the coating layer plugs the pores in the sub layer. So, in this case actually properties of the sub layer rather than those of the coating layer mainly determine the uh, overall properties. So, this is a different technique um, with sintering, stretching, leaching out and track itching techniques only porous membranes can be obtained whatever we have discussed today. Uh, so, these membranes can also be used as a sub layer for composite membranes so that their application can be extended to other areas. So, through the use of phase inversion technique it is possible to obtain open as well as dense structure. So, phase inversion is one of the most important process ok. Uh, that uh, uh, technique can be used to obtain both uh, uh, open as well as open means porous as well as dense uh, membranes. Coating techniques are normally used to prepare thin but dense structures possessing a high selectivity and relatively high flux. So, the basic support material for all composite membrane is often an asymmetric membrane obtained by phase inversion. So, today we will discuss about phase inversion in detail. So, phase inversion is widely used for polymeric membrane preparations. So, it is the easiest, most secure and time tested method to prepare various uh, porous polymeric membranes for different applications. So, uh, the method uh, works by controlling the separation state of the two phases. Right. It is a process in which the polymer actually is transferred from a liquid state to a solid state okay, under a controlled uh, manner or atmosphere. So, the one with the concentrated phase after the phase separation is actually solidified immediately and results in the formation of the membrane. And uh, by controlling the initial stages of the phase transition, the membrane morphology can be controlled. Uh, that is how um, we can either uh, have a porous membrane or we can also prepare non-porous membrane using this particular technique. So, this is a vers very versatile technique allowing all kinds of morphologies to be obtained and most commercial membranes are uh, obtained by phase inversion techniques.
So let us say uh, what are the different types of phase inversion in many books you will see they are writing phase separation this is the same basically ok. So we shall have precipitation by solvent evaporation, we can have precipitation from the vapor phase, we can have precipitation by contrarian evaporation, then we can have thermal precipitation, then we have immersion precipitation. So in all um, um, phase inversion or phase separation process there are two phases, one phase is precipitating and that is forming the solid phase ok and later on the membrane. So in uh, all this phase separation process a liquid polymer solution is precipitated ok to one solid phase which is polymer rich phase another is liquid phase ok which is polymer poor phase. So, this polymer rich phase will form the matrix of the membrane whereas the polymer poor phase will form the pores. So, let us see one by one these techniques. So, precipitation by solvent evaporation ok. So, how we are precipitating by evaporating the solvent. So, this is the simplest the uh, technique as the name indicates ok. Polymer is dissolved in a solvent and the polymer solution is casted on a suitable support ok. So, I can use a stainless sheet uh, plate or a glass uh, plate ok to cast the polymer solution. So, porous support like glass or um, stainless steel ok uh, or non porous support uh, also can be used. The solvent is uh, used to uh, evaporate uh, in an inner not atmosphere usually nitrogen is uh, used. So, water vapor is excluded allowing a dense homogeneous membrane to be obtained. So, it is also possible to deposit the polymer solution on a substrate by deep coating or by spraying. So, we will discuss deep coating later on. So, the next one is precipitation by vapor phase. So, this method was used long back in 1980 by Zygmondi uh, who has prepared uh, actually polymeric membrane using this particular uh, technique. So, a cast film uh, consisting of a polymer and solvent is placed in a vapor atmosphere or we can say call it as a humid atmosphere. Many books has uh, written that uh, humid atmosphere where the vapor phase consists of a non solvent saturated with the same solvent ok. So, the high solvent concentration in the vapor phase prevents the evaporation of the solvent from the cast film ok. The membrane formation occurs because of the penetration of the non solvent into the cast film. So, basically the non solvent which is present in your um, vapor phase will try to penetrate to the uh, matrix of the uh, film ok thereby creating the pores. So, with immersion precipitation an evaporation step in air is sometimes introduced and if the solvent is miscible with water precipitation uh, from the vapor will start at this phase. So, you can see uh, this is a stainless steel uh, conveyor belt arrangement in, in this particular uh, schematic diagram ok. So, you can um, have a doctor blade again the doctor blade is uh, the job is to uh, increase or decrease the thickness of the particular membrane ok. Here your uh, casting solution can be poured here then it is rotating on the stainless steel can uh, conveyor belt arrangement and this uh, film is gradually passing through various chambers. So, these environmental chambers some will have this uh, vapor phase containing the non solvent, some will have the air and in some chambers drying will also take place just before we will take up the final membrane. So, the next one is precipitation by controlled evaporation. So, precipitation by controlled evaporation was already used in the early years of this century. So, the polymer is dissolved in a mixture of a solvent and a non solvent. When I am preparing the uh, cast solution that means, uh, the polymer is dissolved in a solvent which will dissolve the polymer and here I am adding a non solvent at this st stage. Now, the composition of this particular solution in which there is a solvent and a non solvent will shift during evaporation to a higher non solvent and polymer content since the solvent is more volatile than the non solvent. So, you are understanding. So, that means when I am making a mixture of a polymer than its solvent as a non solvent then what will happen when I am casting it then since the solvent is readily evaporated it will evaporate. So, the composition will be more towards the non solvent and the polymer polymer content. So, that will form the matrix of the membrane. So, skin membrane is formed due to the polymer precipitation. So, the next technique is called thermal precipitation. So, this method is frequently used to prepare microfiltration membranes. So, a solution of a polymer in a solvent either it is a mixed or a single ok is cooled to enable phase separation to occur. So, this is basically as a cooling technique ok. So, evaporation of the solvent uh, often allows the formation of the skin membranes. So, in every process the solvent is getting evaporated and finally, precipitation of the polymer membrane uh, is happening or the matrix is happening ok. And uh, 
because the cooling is uniform uh, throughout the cast film, usually it is uniform, okay. The resulting membranes are relatively asymmetric microporous structures with pores that can be controlled within 0.1 to 10 micron, very smaller pore size can be obtained. So, you can see uh, this particular diagram in which the polymer solution is actually poured on a water cooled uh, chill roll, this is a water cooled chill roll, okay, which is rotating in this direction, okay. And once uh, the chill roll is uh, uh, cooling the casting solution, then it is resulting into a polymeric film. The film is passed through a extraction uh, chamber uh, where uh, it is passing. So, th these are actually uh, this uh, whatever round shape things you are seeing, these are this conveyor belt type arrangements, okay. And the film is passing through uh, this uh, chamber, okay. Then it goes through drying, okay. And the extraction uh, solvent um, can also be recycled back. So, the next technique which is one of the most important technique uh, or most important this one uh, commercially adapted technique uh, for membrane preparation in most of the industries that is actually immersion precipitation. So, most of the uh, commercial membranes are manufactured using uh, immersion precipitation. So, uh, here the casting solution that means the polymer plus the solvent which dissolve it okay, is cast on a suitable support and left to stand for 10 to 100 seconds very uh, small residence time. So, as to allow some of the solvent to evaporate, uh, evaporate. The idea is not to evaporate all the solvent, but to just allow some of the solvents to evaporate. Then the film is immersed in a coagulation bath okay, containing a non-solvent, right. So, the non-solvent can be usually water, we can have some other solvent also, non-solvent also. The precipitation occurs because of the exchange of the solvent and non-solvent, right. So, you can look this figure what is happening. So, this is the polymer solution, right. Okay, uh, on the support, uh, there is a support on that. So, this I am putting it in a precipitation bath containing a non solvent. Now, what is happening? You can see uh, when the process is on, the non solvent is trying to diffuse inside the polymeric membrane, whereas the solvent is diffusing out of the polymeric uh, film. Now, this structure actually uh, creating uh, pores. Okay, the membrane is uh, usually post treated by annealing in a bath of hot water. Okay, annealing is a metallurgical process, right. So, mostly asymmetric membranes are obtained by this membrane. You can understand that the, we are talking about asymmetric membrane here, there are two layers here. Okay. So, uh, the choice of polymer and choice of casting solution solvent are very important for this uh, particular uh, process. So, the ideal polymer uh, should be an amorphous, but not brittle thermoplastic okay, with a glass transition temperature more than usually 50 degrees centigrade. And we can have varieties of casting solution solvent, usually the best casting solution solvents are dimethyl formamide, N-methyl pyrolidone and dimethyl acetamide. Uh, apart from this, there are several variables that are adjusted to control membrane properties. Okay, some of them are composition of the polymer solution. So, are you going to uh, have some other additives okay, uh, which can help in forming pore of a particular size or so then solvent evaporation temperature and evaporation time and temperature of the non-solvent media. So, all these parameters, these are process parameters can be optimized to get a particular desired pore size and pore size distribution. You can see how it actually looks like this is the top screen, okay. this is the uh, an, uh, enlarged image of the top screen okay. and this is the top screen uh, cross section right? and uh, these are actually the pores. So, uh, most of the membranes in use today are phase inversion membranes. Okay, they are obtained by this uh, immersion precipitation techniques. So, phase inversion membranes can be prepared from a wide variety of polymers. The only requirement is that the polymer must be solution in a solvent or a solvent mixture. So, that is the only criteria for uh, using this phase uh, separation or phase inversion technique. Basically, the membranes can be prepared in two configurations, either we can have a flat sheet membrane okay, or we have tubular membranes. So, uh, you see how the flat sheet membrane, these are commercial uh, membranes available okay. and uh, these are hollow fibers, these are ceramic membranes, okay. these are tubular membranes. So, let us see how the flat sheet membrane can be prepared. Okay. The flat membranes are used in a platen frame and spiralune system. This we have discussed when we have discussed the membrane modules. Okay. The polymer is dissolved in a suitable solvent or a solvent mixture. The viscosity of the solution depends on the molecular weight of the polymer, its concentration, the kind of solvent and the various additives. So, polymer solution is actually poured on the conveyor belt arrangement. Again, mostly the same type of arrangements here. Uh, there are some conveyors usually having the stainless steel belts, right. Then we can have a casting knife here. The height of the knife is determining the thickness of the membrane. Then it goes through a coagulation bath, 
okay. And then after that also, after it is cleaned uh, and comes out of the coagulation bath, okay, we can uh, go for, uh, we will have to go for different uh, post treatments, okay, uh, to uh, before we get a uh, dry membrane. So, the polymer solution is cast directly on a supporting layer and a casting knife will actually uh, help in thickness of the, deciding the thickness of the membrane. Uh, the casting thickness can uh, roughly vary from 50 to 500 micron. So, the cast film is then immersed in a non-solvent bath. Whatever the film that is casted using a polymer and a solvent uh, and the film is formed, now that will go to a non-solvent bath, okay, where the exchange occurs between the solvent and a non-solvent and usually the polymer precipitates. So, the non-solvent will try to through the membrane matrix or the polymer okay, uh, or the film and the solvent which is already present in the film will try to evaporate. So, uh, this is how actually it happens. Uh, so, one is diffusing out, another is diffusing in. So, water is often used as a non-solvent, but organic solvents like methanol okay, can also be used you know, for different uh, uh, polymers. Now, non-solvent can not be chosen since the solvent non-solvent pair is very important parameter in obtaining the desired structure. So, uh, the membranes obtained after precipitation can be used directly or a post treatment that is heat treatment can be applied. So, it depends actually uh, what is the uh, what is your intention and what is your intended uh, application. So, depending on that what you will decide basically whether uh, you will use directly after the membrane is prepared or it comes from the bath or where you are going for to take it for some thermal uh, treatment uh, such as drying or some other uh, processes like anneaning and uh, uh, cooling. Uh, other preparation parameters that helps in preparing a flat sheet membrane are uh, polymer concentration, evaporation time, humidity, temperature and composition of the casting solution. Now, these all these parameters are mainly determining the ultimate membrane performance which is flux and selectivity and hence its application. Right. So, uh, uh, what is the in, uh, what is the flux and what is the selectivity of the prepared membrane? Ultimately, that will decide where this particular membrane will be used. What type of what type of application? So, a free flat membranes can be obtained by casting the polymer solution upon a metal or a polymer belt. So, after the coagulation and washing, the free flat sheet can be collected. So, if I do not want uh, any other uh, um, treatment processes, then I can usually collect it after coagulation and washing and use it. So, flat membranes are very useful for testing on a laboratory scale as they are relatively simple to prepare for very small membrane surface areas. So, it is less than 1000 meters centimeter square. The membranes are cast mostly by the uh, by hand or semi automatically on a glass plate. Uh, so, glass plate, metals and polymers such as polytetrafluoroethylene, polymethyl, methyl cryolate PMMA uh, are some of the other materials which are uh, where the casting solution is casting, casted. Let us see how the tubular membranes are prepared. So, the tubular form is another uh, an alternate geometry and, and very uh, good in uh, terms of commercial application. So, the, we can have either a hollow fiber membrane where so the diameter is less than 0.5 uh, millimeter or we can have capillary membrane where so the diameter is usually 0.5 to 5 mm or we can have tubular membranes. So, diameter is usually greater than uh, 5 mm. So, the dimensions of the uh, tubular membranes are so large that they have to be supported. So, the hollow fibers and capillaries are self supporting. Okay. This also we have discussed during our modular um, configuration discussions. So, although both flat membranes and hollow fiber membranes can exhibit similar performance, the procedures for their preparations are not the same. This we have learned today. Okay. The fiber dimensions are very important since hollow fibers are self supporting. So, since hollow fibers are self supporting, so the mechanical uh, strength is actually uh, less for them and uh, furthermore demixing takes place from the bore side or lumen. Okay, and from the cell side or outside, whereas in pr preparation of the flat membrane, demixing occurs from only one side. So, try to understand what is the meaning of this. So, uh, when I am preparing a flat sheet membrane, so the demixing that means the uh, diffusion of solvent uh, out and non solvent in actually is happening from one side of the membrane only. Whereas, when we are talking about a tubular membranes or hollow fiber membranes, okay, so there is a cell side and there is a tube side. Okay, so, if there is something called inside of the tube and something is the outside of the tube. So, from both sides actually the demixing is occurring. So, that is actually it is complicated. So, we can prepare hollow fibers and capillaries by three different methods. One is called wet spinning or it is also called dry wet spinning method or melt then melt spinning and dry spinning. So, we will discuss this first one this is very important uh, preparation technique. Uh, so, a viscous polymer solution containing a polymer, a 
solvent and sometimes additives are pumped through a spinneret. Okay. So, this is actually the spinneret you can see uh, this is the enlarged version of this and the polymer solution is being filtered before it enters the spinneret. The viscosity of the polymeric solution must be high usually it is should be greater than uh, 100 poise in general. Okay. The bore injection fluid is pumped through the inner tube of the spinneret. So, this is the bore actually through which bore fluid is injected and the polymer solution is passed outside the bore. Okay. There is a air gap, the air gap plays a lot of role in uh, deciding uh, uh, what is the type and quality and thickness of the membrane and then it uh, goes through a coagulation bath and flushing bath then uh, before uh, it goes to final drying. So, uh, after a short residence time in the air uh, or all controlled atmosphere the fiber is immersed in a non solvent bath where coagulation occurs. So, the term actually dry originates from the above steps okay, we are calling it a dry wet uh, spinning method. Na? So, the uh, fiber is then collected upon a gordet. The, remain, uh, the main spinning parameters are extrusion rate of the polymer solution at what rate the uh, extrusion is happening through the spinner rate, the bore fluid rate, uh, the tearing rate. Uh, the residence time in the air gap okay, and the dimensions of the spinner. So, these are the parameters which all can be optimized to uh, produce a particular uh, tailor make membrane. So, these parameters interfere with the membrane forming parameters such as the composition of the polymer solution, the composition of the coagulation bath and its temperature. You can see uh, the scanning electron microscope images of a polypropylene hollow fiber membrane here. Okay. So, uh, this is a cut actually mm. and this is the cross section, okay. this is the inside of the tube and this is the uh, membrane thickness. Uh, student this is the last slide, I will try to explain this how a tubular uh, membrane is uh, prepared here. Uh, see the first one, uh, here we have a porous tube, this is the, this is the porous tube actually okay. right. and there is a casting bob this one, okay, this one the casting bob. So, the casting bob is actually porous. So, what we are doing or what uh, is being done is actually um, there is a reservoir here which is having the polymer solution. So, this polymer solution is pushed through the casting bob. So, the, since the casting bob is porous in nature, so the uh, pore will allow uh, um, the uh, this one uh, um, the polymeric solution to pass through the casting bob and the casting bob is uh, can be moved up and down. Right. So, when it is moved up and down, so the uh, polymer solution that is coming out from the casting bob will get attached to the porous uh, tube and film will uh, form like this. Okay. Once that is done, the casting bob is taken out, then we have to take this porous tube and put it inside a coagulation bath. So, during this coagulation bath what is happening again this uh, solvent and non-solvent uh, uh, diffusion will take place okay. and after uh, certain time you will allow certain residence time in the coagulation bath what will happen that the uh, membrane which is formed inside this porous tube will become loose then we can take it out for further processing. We can get go for some other processing like annealing or uh, some heat treatment if it is required it depends upon what is the intended application. So, students this is how tubular membrane prepared. So, in today's class we have discussed basically how uh, non-porous or dense membranes are uh, prepared, then how symmetric and asymmetric uh, microporous or porous membranes are prepared uh, as well as we have seen how flat sheet and tubular membranes are prepared. So, these are uh, some of the references that I am using. Okay. And uh, uh, then in the next class we will discuss about the preparation of the composite membranes. So, and uh, by various technology uh, techniques which is uh, interfacial polymerization, deep coating, plasma polymerization. Okay. Interfacial polymerization is one of the most important breakthrough in preparing this integrally skin membranes. Okay. So, uh, please keep uh, uh, reading and if you have any doubt uh, you can always drop a mail to me at kmohanty at itg.se.in. So, thank you very much.